All right, here we are again in our parallel RC circuit. Now, um, we are going to be varying frequency in this video and the next two. Um, just keep in mind that varying frequency um, has the same effect as varying capacitance. Typically, frequency is the more easily varied component in um, the formula, but you can have a variable capacitor and see varying um, capacitive values from the variable capacitor. So keep in mind that it, it works the same. So if frequency went up, you would see the output, the ohmic value go down. If capacitance went up, you would also see that ohmic value go down and vice versa. If frequency went down, you would see the ohmic value go up. If capacitance went down, you would see the ohmic value go up. Okay, so in this instance, we are going to increase frequency. So it goes from 50, 50 kHz to 75 kHz, which is an increase. And we're going to look at what happens to the capacitive reactants of C1 to start with. So it was 4.19 k ohms. With the increase in frequency, we do see that it has gone down to 2.79 k ohms. We are expecting to see a similar decrease in the ohmic value of C2. It was 9.95 k. Now it is 6.64 k. All right, so when we were looking before, um, when we combine our ohmic values in parallel, that is a reciprocal formula. And reciprocal formulas, we know that the output is lower than the lowest value. So both of our values have gone down, which means the lowest value is lower than it once was. And that means that our total capacitive reactants must have gone down. If we look at the number, it was 2.95 K and now it is 1.96 K. All right, when you look at impedance, you see again, a similar reaction. So when you put it into that formula, you're going to get something smaller than the smallest value. Well, you have just decreased the smallest value. So we're expecting that value to go down. It was 2.86K, and now it is 1.93K, which is smaller than the total capacitive reactants and definitely smaller than it was to begin with. So if we see our ohmic value decreasing, we're expecting to see our current increasing because they're inversely proportional. So it was 20.98 milliamps, and now it is 31.02 milliamps. All right, we're gonna take one last look at our current through our individual branches. So we know that the current through V1 is going to stay the same. Voltage has not been affected by frequency and neither has resistance. So since current is voltage divided by resistance, if neither one of those values change, it's not possible to see a change in current. So that one will stay the same. Now we look at branch two, we know that ohmic value has decreased. And because it has decreased, we are expecting that current to increase because they are inversely proportional, ohmic values and currents. So now we see it with a larger current of 21.51 milli. We should see exactly the same in C2. So if we have a smaller ohmic value, we are expecting to see a larger current. It was 6.03 milli, now it is 9.03 milli, larger. Again, you can add those two currents through your capacitors together and we get 30.55 milli. If we square that, and then we take five milli squared and square root the whole thing, we come within hundredths of our total current of 31.02 milli, and no, we did it correctly. All right, next we are going to look at a decrease in a parallel RC circuit. 